Hi, this is Swati and in today's video, we'll see a very important and very easy chapter according to me, probability of grade 10th. So this is the most easiest chapter I feel in your class 10th because it's very easy to score and the concept is also easy. There's nothing much or nothing new introduced. It is the same concept that you have learned in grade 9th. Only it's about practicing the questions. So in this video, I'll complete all the topics, all the concepts here. And also we'll do some important questions that have been repeated in your board exam. So let's get started. Firstly, what is probability? It is the mathematical measurement of uncertainty. If you are not sure about that event happening, it might or might not happen. There are some probable chances. I'm quite sure that it is going to happen. There is like 70% chances. So these are all the elements of uncertainty. Now you have two different types of approaches in probability. The first one is experimental or empirical approach. The result of probability based on actual experiment. So the name itself suggests experimental. So if you keep doing the experiment again and again for a particular event, the results keep changing. So this is experimental approach. Now, on the other hand, the theoretical approach is in this we cannot predict the result without performing the experiment. Here we should perform the experiment else the result cannot be predicted. This is also known as classical probability. Actually, these terms are not very much used, but it's just that I'm just going through all the topics that you have. You just need to know. That's it. Now, next one is equally likely outcomes and not equally likely outcomes. Very easy. And the name itself suggests equally likely. If we have the same possibility of getting each outcome, that means the probability of each outcome is same. For example, a dice. We know that dice has only six outcomes. The probability of getting one, two, three, four, five, six. The probable chances of all these is same. Like probability of getting a one is one by six. Probability of getting a two on a dice is one by six. So we'll see how it is. But it is same. Now next is not equally likely. If we don't have the same possibility of getting each outcome. Now the possibility of each outcome is different. For example, three green balls and two pink balls. We have these in a bag. So these are not equally likely outcome of like the possibility of a green ball might be more than a pink ball. Now, let's say for an example, I have a bag in which majorly I have green balls and very less there are pink balls. So obviously, when I put my hand into the bog bag, the major chances of getting a ball is green because there are so many green balls inside a bag. So here the outcome is not same. For green, it is going to be different. For pink, it is going to be different. For green, there are more chances because the bag is full of green majorly. But, and for pink, it is less chances. So it is not equally likely. Now, next is impossible event. If there is no possibility of an event to occur, that means the possibility of event is not there at all then the probability is zero. Now, for example, if you have a bag full of blue balls and I want to draw a green ball. So if there is no possible event because the green ball is not there at all. So the possibility of taking a green ball is zero. It is impossible to get it. Now, on the other hand, we have sure or certain event. So if a possibility of an event to occur is sure, like we are 100% sure that that possibility will occur, then it is said to be a sure pro possibility, sure probability. Now, sure probability, the probability is always equal to 1. We need to know that sum of all the probabilities is always 1. And here, this is very important that the probability P of E is probability of an event. The probability of an event always lies between 0 and 1. 
you cannot have more less than zero or you cannot have more than one yeah it can have zero and one so zero we just saw it is impossible event one is the sure event or the certain event now how do we find the probability of an event probability of an event is equal to number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes so what are the favorable chances of getting that you know getting that event happening divided by total outcomes all the outcomes together now for any event e probability of getting an event plus probability of e bar here we have e bar e bar is not e probability of getting an event or probability of not getting an event is equal to 1 so basically sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1 now what is e and e dash e and e dash are complementary events so one is happening the other is not happening so they are complementary to each other complementary events now next one here we have some uh, basic points or some basic terms that we have questions on first is a coin you know coin has two outcomes one is a head and the other is a tail so there are just two outcomes now when i toss two coins when i toss two coins simultaneously what are my events on both the coins i can see head head on both the coins i can see tail tail or I can see on the first coin head, second coin tail, or first coin tail, second coin heads. So, so when there are well, when there is one coin toss, we have two possibility, two outcomes, two par one. When there are two coins tossed, we have two par two. This two is number of coins. Okay. So that means four outcomes. Now, when there are three coins tossed, okay, three coins. See, I've seen many students who get confused on writing the sample space. Sample space is basically writing all the favorable outcomes. Now, I'll tell you how can we write for three coins. Now, three coins, it is very clear how many outcomes are we going to have. Two power three. Two power three is two into two into two. That is eight right so yes three coins how do we write three coins first let me write head heads tails tails heads tails and tails head these are the four that we have seen in the two coins the same thing i'm going to repeat here head heads tails tails heads tails and tails heads after writing this in my first column, I can just write head all over. And in my second column, I can just write tail all over. So this is how you can find when the three coins are tossed. You need not think, okay, I have missed this H, H, H. Or next will it come tail, tail, tail. Or H, tail, 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 H, H. So it's very confusing at times. So this is how you can remember. Write the two uh, Two coins have you have written and in the first column all heads, in the second column all tails. Okay, now next coming to is dies. Dies, you know that when one dies is rolled, we have six outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's very easy. You have six outcomes, right? Six power one. The power denotes the number of dies. Now, when two dies are rolled, when two dies are rolled, so what is the sample space? 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1. Now, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. Similarly, here 2 is the first one. 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5. 2, 6 and so on. So here you will be filling and this is a sample space. Total how many coins will have? 6 par uh, 2. So 6 par 2 is 6 into 6, 36. So this is how you can figure out the sample space. Now the next one is 
cards very important cards so here how many cards do we have we have 52 deck of cards right so in this 52 deck of cards we have 26 of red color and 26 of black color 26 red and 26 black now what are these 26 in red we have 13 hearts so this is the symbol and 13 what hearts and diamonds this is the symbol right now on the other hand in black we have again 13 clubs clubs is a tree shaped and 13 spades spades is kind of leaf all right these cards we have now in each what are these 13 we'll see so 13 may you have the number starting from 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then you have j jack queen king and ace a so these are the 13 cards that are present in each so you have 13 in hearts, 13 in diamonds, 13 in clubs, 13 in spades. Now, what are face cards? Face cards, the name itself suggests face cards, the cards that have the faces on it. So basically are Jack, Queen and King. So Jack, Queen and King. So if I ask how many face cards do we have? So face cards here we have Jack Queen King, Jack Queen King, Jack Queen King, Jack Queen King. So three, 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 three. So all together we have 12 face cards, right? Ace is not a face card because it does not have any face. Face card means that has a face. You can remember like that. So you have 12 face cards. You have numbers 2 to 10 and you have an ace. This is about cards. So this was all about the probability chapter. Now we'll start with some important questions which have come multiple times in your board exams. So if you're perfect with all these three topics, the coins, the um, dice, the cards, and you, if you know how to write the sample space of it, your questions will be very smooth. Okay, now starting with the first question, the probability of selecting a rotten apple randomly from a heap of 900 apples so total apples are 900 is 0.18 the probability is 0.18 what is the number of rotten apples in the heap so we know that probability of an event is number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes so probability of an event is given to us is 0.18. Number of favorable outcomes, number of rotten apples we don't know. Let us take it as x and total number of apples are 900. So from this x is equal to 900 into 0.18. So when we multiply we get 162 rotten apples. So out of 900 apples 162 were bad were rotten all right now next one a coin is tossed two times so two times a coin is tossed you should know how to write the sample space of it find the probability of getting at most what do you mean by at most at most means maximum maximum one hit so firstly let us write the sample space two coins are tossed it can be hh it can be TT, it can be HT or TH. These are the four outcomes, favorable outcomes. Now, at most means maximum limit is one head. One head means let us see probability of event is what? Favorable outcomes by total outcomes. 
So here total outcomes, you can see there are four outcomes divided by four. Now, how many favorable outcomes? At most one head means maximum one head. So it can be no head also, right? Maximum one head. That means no head or one head. So here maximum one head, but here you have two heads. You cannot count this. Tail, tail, yes maximum one head or no heads this can be counted here you have maximum one head here you have maximum one head so we have three favorable outcomes so our probability is three by four i hope this is clear now on the other hand let me explain you if you have at least one head if it was at least at least means minimum one head it can be one or more than one so if it was that then you then you would have counted hh ht and th it can be one or more but if it was at most maximum it can be zero or one so here also probability of event is three by four so I hope the difference is clear. What is at most and what is at least? Many students get confused between at most. So please be uh, clear with this. You majorly have one question on this at most at least. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Yes. 12 defective pens are accidentally mixed with 132 good ones. It is not possible to just look at a pen and tell whether or not it is defective. One pen is taken out at random from the slot. Determine the probability that the pen taken out is a good one. So firstly, let us find total pens. How many pens we have? We already had 132 pens and 12 defective pens were accidentally mixed. So total pens would be 132 plus 12, that is 144. Now, what do you need to find the probability that the pen is a good one? So favorable outcome by total outcomes. You need to write the whole formula. I'm just writing in short, but in your boards, you need to write it. So favorable outcome is what? The good ones. How many good ones do we have? 132 by total outcomes are 144. So you always need to reduce your answer. Your answer should always be in the reduced form. So 12 12s are 12 11s are. So 11 by 12 is the probability. And after this, you need not reduce. You need not reduce your probability in decimals. It is better to just leave it in fractions, but the reduced fraction. Right? Okay. Now next one is Probability of selecting a blue marble at random from a jar that contains only blue, black and green marble is 1 by 5. So this is for blue. The probability of selecting a black one at random is 1 by 4. This is black. If the jar contains 11 green marbles, find the total number of marbles. Right. Okay, so firstly, you know that total probability is equal to 1, right? Probability is 1. So probability of blue plus probability of black plus probability of green is equal to 1. So blue is 1 by 5 plus 1 by 4. Plus probability of green is not known. So I would have taken as x is equal to 1. So if I need to find x, I will transfer everything minus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 4. Whenever we have fractions, we will take LCM. So here LCM is 20. So 20 minus 4 minus 5 will give me 11 by 20. What is this 11 by 20? 11 by 20 is the probability of the green marbles, right? But we need to find the total marbles. Now, what is given to us? So, probability of green is equal to 
number of green by total marbles so probability of green we got 11 by 20 number of green marbles we have 11 given by total so i can cancel 11 11 so total marbles is equal to 20 so the total number of marbles is 20 i hope this is clear so here we have used the concept that we have learned sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1 the probability of any event always lies between 0 and 1. It can be 0 and 1, but not less or more than 1. Right? Okay. Next one here is a bag contains 15 white and some black balls. If probability of drawing a black ball is thrice that of drawing a white ball. So what is there? Probability of drawing a black ball is thrice that of probability drawing a white ball. Find the number of black balls in bag. Okay. So firstly here, what is given to us the probability of white is 15. And let me take probability of black as x. Right? So here, what do we have this condition? Probability of black. What is probability? Favorable outcomes by total outcomes. What are the total outcomes? White plus black is equal to 3 into... Now, probability of white. Favorable outcomes, number of favorable white balls is 15 by total is 15 plus x. So can I cancel 15 plus x, 15 plus x? Yes. So, x is equal to 3 into 15, 45. So, what is 45? Black balls. Black balls is 45. Total black, black balls are 45. Okay. So, I hope this is clear till here. All right. Next one, find the probability that a leap year. What do you mean by leap year? How many days does leap year has? 366 days. Right? Selected at random contains 53 Sundays. Now, very important. Now, 53 Sundays. So, 366 is basically 364 plus 2 days. Right? So, 364 is 52 weeks. So, 52 weeks means 52 Sundays are already there. Here you have 52 Sundays. Remaining two days are there. In these two days, how much possibility do we have that it is a Sunday? So, what days can these be? So, these days can be either Monday, Tuesday or Tuesday, Wednesday or Wednesday, Thursday or Thursday, Friday or Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, or Sunday, Monday. So these are the favorable outcomes that, no, these are the total outcomes that these two days can be there. But what do we want? We want it as a Sunday. So what? how many possibility outcomes do we see here? One and two. So what will be the probability of this event, favorable outcomes are 2 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, total outcomes are 7. So, out of these 7 possibility, there are 2 possibility, 2 favorable outcomes that the day is a Sunday. So, if this, the, if this is Sunday, then it becomes 53 Sundays. So, very, very important. But if it was not a leap year, if it was not a leap year, I'll tell you, if it was not a leap year, number of days is 365, right? So, 365, 52 weeks plus one day extra. Now, in this one day, it can be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. It can be any day. Now, Possibility that it is a Sunday is there's just one possibility. So it should be 1 by 7. 
So leap year and not a leap year, both the questions are very important. Either one can come. I hope this is clear. The concept is clear. Okay. Next here is on tossing three coins simultaneously. Now three coins I've already explained before how to be write the sample space. Let me write it again. H H H T T H T T. So this is for two coins. Same thing I'm going to repeat here. H H H T T H T T. Now when three coins are tossed, the first column I'll fill with H in the first place and the second column I'll fill with T in the first place. So this is the sample space for three coins. Eight possibility. Find the probability of giving getting at least one head and one tail. At least means minimum. It can be one or more but you should definitely have one heads and one tail so let us see what is the possibility here we have one heads one tail it can be more more than one also is possible because it is at least but in case of at most at most means maximum it cannot be more it can be one or less but coming back to this at least means one or more. So this is one favorable outcome. The second one, the third one, because heads tails are already there. One extra tail is there. That's not a problem. Here also you have, here also you have heads and tails both. Here also you have heads and tails both. So probability of this event is what? What are the favorable outcomes? One, two, three, four, five, six, six outcomes out of total outcomes are eight. Two threes are, two fours are. So the probability of getting at least one head and one tail is three by four. I hope this is clear. Okay, one last question on cards. I've already explained you the cards flow chart. Now using that, we will solve this. One card is drawn from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards. Find the probability of getting... A king of red color. Now we have a king. You have uh, um, how many kings do we have? Basically, we have four kings, right? Because it is divided into 13, 13, 13, 13. So two 13s are for red color. Two 13s are for black color. So 13, 13 each means two kings we have. So probability of this is... Two kings out of how many deck of cards? 52. Two ones are, two 26 are. So one by 26 is the probability. Now next one is a face card. How many face? What is a face card? Basically a card which has a face in it. So we have jack, queen, king, j, q, k. So j, q, k are present in all the four. So it is present in hearts, it is present in diamonds, it is present in clubs as well as spades. So total how many face cards do we have? 12 divided by 52. So 12 divided by 52, 4 threes are 12, 4, 13 the 52. So 3 by 13. All right, next one, a red face card. Now, a red face card, see, here we have 13 hearts, 13 diamonds, 13 clubs, and 13 spades. This is black. This is red. Okay? And in each, we have jack, queen, king. So, in each, we have jack, queen, king. These are basically face cards, right? Face cards. So Jack, Queen, King, Jack, Queen, King in red. So three plus three, we have six face cards in red color. Six face cards of red, six face cards of black. Now here what they have asked, red face cards. So red faced cards are six by total is 50. So, two threes are six, two twenty-six are. 
So 3 by 26 is the red face card probability. So I hope all the questions are clear and the concept is clear. It's a very easy and scoring uh, chapter of this year 10th. It's very easy to score. Only you need to understand coins, cards and um, dice. And some question that I've explained is all from the previous year's question. Please go through this and you will definitely um, understand and get marks from this chapter. I hope this video is clear to you. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you.